In this video, I'll be answering the question you see on the screen here from paper 33 from the year 2024 Cambridge A-level exams. If you're looking for a different question from this paper, there should be a link to a playlist in the description below. And if you're looking for a different paper, have a look around on my channel. I'll be doing all this on a whiteboard, hopefully just like you're used to your teacher doing. But remember, we're not in a classroom, so take advantage of YouTube, pause, rewind, whatever helps you out. Uh, if you find this or any of my videos useful, I would greatly appreciate a like, a subscribe, or even a share. In question five, we are asked to express this expression in partial fractions. That means expand it out into multiple different fractions. Uh, we, there's three possible answers for this. I'll write them all at the end, and I'll only really go through one of them. But at the end, I'll show you how they're all really combined. Um, the, answer, the, the way I'm going to do it is, I'm going to write out both the bottom rows, um, x minus 1 and 2x plus 1. And I'm going to say that uh, there must be something above here. I'm going to think about like what could be up there. Like, it would be nice if it was just a and b. That'd be, that'd be ideal. A lot of partial fractions are like that. The problem if it was just a and b, uh, two constants, um, the problem with that would be if we add these back together, uh, there no x squared would appear. Uh, so if you think of cross multiplying, this times this, this times this, where would the x squared appear from? So we have to think about that. So that means there must be an x up here somewhere. I'll just go ahead and write ax plus b and a c over here. We only need one of the x's. You could put cx plus d, but you'd just find one of them was actually equal to zero. So there's only, only one of the x's would stay. Actually, I don't. I guess uh, it'd be hard to solve, but you could assume one is zero at one point, something like that. I'm, I'm not fully sure. Um, but uh, th this is one way we could do it. Uh, another way, I won't finish it, but I guess, uh, yeah, I'll just show you the steps. Um, instead of this way, we could have got D plus an E over something plus an F. That'd be a another way. Again, I'll show you this answer at the end, but I'll continue on uh, this method. So if we cross multiply this, as I was saying, we then just equate all the x squares, all the x's, all the numbers. So think about cross multiplying here, the bottom row, let me do it down here. The bottom row will just get back to where we were, 2x plus one, you wouldn't have to write that in. Um, the top row, let's uh, expand it all out, 2x times ax, that'd be 2ax squared. 2x times b is 2bx, um, plus ax, one times b, plus b, um, plus c times x, and then minus one times c, so uh, and minus, minus c. Now, what we know is this is still equal to up here. That means all the x squares have to equal all these x squares, and there's only one term for x squares, that's handy. That means two ax squared must equal six, x squared. All the x's cancel. I won't bother writing the x's in future. And um, that means 2a equals 6, a equals 3. But we've, we've solved one of our numbers. Uh, there was a very quick way we could see that a was going to be 3, by the way. Uh, you'll see it better when I write all the answers. But it's basically 2x by x is 2x squared on the bottom. 6x squared divided by 2x squared leaves a 3. So um, again, you'll see that a little clearer when I show you a few tricks at the end. Okay, let's equate all the x's now. Um, here's an x, here's an x, and here's an x. I said, remember, a is three now. So we get 2bx plus 3x plus cx is equal, all the x's over here, that's minus 2x. Sorry, I said I wasn't gonna write the x's, but we'll just say, we'll, we'll cancel all these x's across. And uh, while we're at it, we'll bring this 3x over, get minus 5x. So we'll get 2b plus c is equal to minus 5. Can't do anything more there. There's infinite answers. If you give me a b, I'll just tell you what c is. But we can stay going. We can uh, combine all the, the things with x to the power 0, or no x. That's this b and this uh, c. That tells us that b plus c is equal to all the numbers over here, and that's 2. That's a simultaneous equation. Quite an easy one to solve, in fact. At least it would be if I remember to put this minus in, um, which is here. So uh, now it's quite an easy one to solve. We just add these together. 
2b plus b is 3b, c plus minus c is, is nothing, and minus 5 plus 3 is minus 3. We, uh, equate, uh, we divide both sides by 3, b is minus 1. Finally, we need c. Pick any equation you want. Uh, I'll go ahead with this line here. I'll say c is equal minus 5 minus 2b, but b is minus 1. So that's uh, minus 5 plus 2 is minus 3. So the final answer, my final answer um, here, yeah, let me write it, actually let me write it up here. My final answer would be 3, a was 3, so 3x, plus, uh, sorry, not plus, um, plus minus 1 is minus 1. That's over x minus 1. And then the c would be a minus 3. Let's leave a plus here and minus 3 up here. And over 2x plus 1. That, that'd, be, that'd be my answer. It's a perfectly okay answer. Another answer would be this one here. Let me clean this up. And uh, let me just write down what that would have been. It would have been 3 plus 2 over x minus 1 um, plus minus 3 over 2x plus one, and a third answer, you would, so this one, I'll talk more about this one in a moment. Um, this answer, as we got, this, the next answer, let me write it in here, two over x minus one uh, plus six x over two x plus one, or six x, maybe plus zero if you want. So this one would have come about if I had wrote a letter here, a number, just a constant here, and and then the x on this side. So let's say a, b, x plus c. I would have got this answer here. And that I would have got this answer. This one is the, the one I jotted down in between. Now, how do they all sort of combine? They're all the same. If we think of uh, this one up here, just this term here. First of all, minus three has the minus three here. These two are the same. So I'm saying this term is the same as these two. And, and equally down here, uh, this is the same as this. I'm saying this term is equal to these two. So let's, let's see, see, see why I'm saying that from this term. I'm gonna try to divide this in. X minus one divides into three X minus one. And X goes into three X three times. And then what's the remainder? So we multiply three by this again, and we get three X uh, minus three. Take these away from each other and we get zero, we get plus two. That tells me that this divided by this is equal to, um, so let's put a circle on this and it equals to this. It equals to three, that's where that three came from, with a remainder two, so two divided by that. Again, if I were to divide uh, this one in here, two x goes into this three times with a remainder minus three. So if I divided that in and go in three times, and we'd end up three times the one, take the, that three away from zero, we'd end up with minus three. So these are all actually combined. Uh, I would probably say this is the, the, the master answer, as it were. Um, whereas these two are perfectly okay. They will nearly always help you out solving a question where you need to uh, have partial fractions. Okay, I hope that was clear. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching and have a great day.